Hey y'all, it's Ashley Bookishram and I am back with a, another video. Today, as you can see from the title of this video, I'm here to do a library book haul. So I have said in other videos that I am doing separate book hauls for stuff that I receive and stuff that I have purchased for the month because of the fact that I used to do that in my vlogs and I'm not doing weekly vlogs anymore. So I am going to create that as a separate video, which I have done for I believe September and October and there will be one coming this month. However, I still do haul a lot from the library. As a matter of fact, most of my book hauls are actually stuff that I have received as opposed to stuff that I purchased. So I still wanted to make sure that I was showing y'all things that I have acquired from the library because I love doing library book hauls. As a matter of fact, any library book hauls that I have done, I'll make sure that I leave in the description box below. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I don't have as much as I usually have and I, by my standards because this could end up being a lot and then y'all are like, Ashley, actually this is a lot of stuff. By my standards, I don't currently have a lot checked out that y'all haven't already seen so I still have some stuff left over from previous checkouts but this is just the new stuff that I have recently acquired. I have it divided into four piles. The first pile that we're going to be going through is picture books then I have children's and middle grade and then I have a pile of YA and then I have a pile of graphic works which includes manga graphic novels and comics. So we're going to go ahead get started and jump right in. So the first book that I want to show you is a non-fiction picture book and it is called Exquisite and this is a, about the poetry and life of Gwendolyn Brooks. Gwendolyn Brooks was the first black person to receive the Pulitzer Prize and this picture book actually just chronicles her journey as a child and then her writing and just her various experiences and I haven't been able to read this one yet. I got this one actually for me. Baby Girl is too young to sit still for most of this. This has a lot of text on the inside but I am really really excited to read it. I always tell people that if you're new to nonfiction, you're not really a nonfiction reader, children's nonfiction is always a great place to start because you're still getting information but it's more condensed and not as intimidating as picking up an adult nonfiction book. The next one that I have here is Fancy Nancy Takes the Case and this is actually a beginner reader. I don't think I've ever talked about beginner readers on my channel so a lot of times too when kids are transitioning through the reading process they start with board books and they move to picture books and then they have what these are called which is beginner readers which assist them in transitioning to becoming more independent readers and they usually are set at different levels and they don't have a lot of text on the page. This is actually one of the higher level of beginner readers but I I actually ended up getting this one because I'm a huge fan of Fancy Nancy. <laughs> I love Fancy Nancy and this is a new one that came out and I was like I want to check it out. So once again here goes another one that I actually checked out for myself to read and I just I haven't gotten to this one yet either but this is a quick read. If you've never checked out Fancy Nancy, Fancy Nancy is great for teaching your kids different vocabulary skills. She always uses like higher level than what they are on their reading level like higher level vocabulary and then she explains what the word means and I don't know if if it's in here it probably isn't in here I think that this is probably just a regular story but some of the books do contain more advanced words but with a definition and it helps build your child's vocabulary. The next one that I have here is Salma the Syrian Chef and this is by Danny Ramadan and the art is by Anna Braun and this is a picture book about a character of course by the name of Salma who ends up coming to the states with her mom from Syria. Her dad is still in Syria and and she's noticed that her mom is really, really, really just down and depressed. And she wants to make her happy by cooking a traditional Syrian meal. And she doesn't really know the recipes or the ingredients. So it's about her figuring out those recipes and making a meal for her mom. And I think this is going to be great. I actually really, really love the artwork in this one. I love like bigger size picture books. I don't know. This feels a little bit bigger than the than a normal size, but I'm really interested in just reading the story because I think it's going to be really heartfelt and warm. The next one that I have here is called Fresh Princess, which is actually inspired by Will Smith's um, The Fresh Prince. And this was written by Danini Milner and pictures by Gladys Joes. And this is specifically about a girl who moves to a new neighborhood, of course, and she's having trouble adjusting because nothing is like her old neighborhood. But as always, she has a plan. She's ready to mix and mingle and get to know people and kind of make this new 
this new home her home and I'm just really excited to read this because I love the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and I'm trying to figure out like how they actually tied in probably different parts of the Fresh Prince into this picture book. The next one that I have here is Bad Brows by Jason Carter Eaton and Mike Petrick. This is one that I actually have read with Baby Girl and my mom has seen me read it to her and she's like don't read that baby this book anymore because it literally is about a little boy who loses his eyebrows and then he wakes up with these eyebrows on his face and they are completely off on their own adventure and they do things that he's not used to doing and my mom was like that feels like a horror movie but it really is good it's it's hilarious and it's cute you can see like the, the different eyebrows I thought it was absolutely hilarious because it is essentially about this kid and his eyebrows just doing their own thing but I, I definitely would say this is for an older audience baby girl wasn't really interested in this one but I found it hilarious the next one that I have that we actually have read together too is child of the universe and this is by Ray Jalawad Hana I'm, I'm sure that I have absolutely said this wrong and I actually think y'all I think I've shown this one in my October book haul or maybe I did it in my September book haul and unboxing I can't remember but that's okay I'm going to show it again because this is an absolutely beautiful picture book and it is about a young girl and her father just talking before bed and he tells her that the universe has conspired to create her and the artwork in this is so pretty it is absolutely beautiful and baby girl really liked this one because the artwork was so nice i'm trying to find yes this is it this full length image it is beautiful and this is one that we've actually read several times before going to bed so i think this is a good bedtime book because it actually is a conversation that takes place during bedtime but we have read this one multiple times and I know I'm showing it again I think a couple of these I've already shown before but that's okay okay so the next pile that we're going to move to is going to be our children's and middle grade pile and the first one that I have in this pile is the Derby Daredevils Kenzie starts a team by Kit Rosewater and illustrated by Sophie Escobas Escobas and this is about two girls who decided they want to be a part of a roller derby team and then they find out that their city is actually creating one but then they have to have five team members and actually to participate in the new league and it is an exploration about that and girls being involved in roller derby but also a conversation about friendship because the two girls are best friends and then one of the girls actually ends up becoming friends with a lot of people and it bothers the other girl she's like why is she becoming best friends with everybody so I think that this is going to be an interesting exploration of actual like middle grade friendships and how they alter and how they change and helping kids kind of navigate those experiences. The next one that I have here is Lupe Wong Won't Dance and I talked about this in a video where I was talking explicitly about my most anticipated releases for October and I found out that my library was getting copies so I was like oh I definitely need to just get a copy from the library and this is by Donna Barbara Guira, and this is about a young girl by the name of Lupe who is just this amazing individual and she is really into Doctor Who. She constantly is debating different aspects of her school that she thinks should change and she needs to get all A's so she can meet her favorite baseball player who like her is both a Chinese and Mexican and what ends up happening is that her gym class actually is imposing this dancing part of their course and Lupe is like this is not going to happen. I'm not going to let it happen. But I'm sure it's going to be kind of like a conversation about the fact that she needs to get all A's. And if she doesn't dance, she won't get that A. And then she won't meet, meet her favorite baseball player. So I, I think this is going to be interesting. I think that Lupe is going to be a funny character. And I cannot wait to read this one. The next one that I have is Ghost Squad written by Clara Bell A. Orte Ortega. And this is one that I think has been making its rounds on BookTube as a great debut middle grade book to read. I think it's this is the debut I'm pretty sure this is no maybe this is not debut I could be so wrong about that I don't think this is a debut novel but this is about two kids who actually end up casting a spell 
and raising malicious spirits so they have to work with one of the character's grandmother in order to contain the spirits or send the spirits back. I've heard nothing but good things about Ghost Squad so I'm super excited to pick this one up. I I should have read it in October but I think what ended up happening is I had it on hold but it was at a different location. I didn't get it and then I literally just got this like this week so I'm excited to finally get the chance to read it. Okay so moving on to the young adult pile. The first one that I have here is Sanctuary by Paula Mendoza and Abby Shear. And this is a, about a futuristic version of the United States. I think it's in 2032. It is 2032. And what ends up happening is that everybody in the United States basically has been given a chip and the chip is implanted into you and it's a way for the government basically to track everybody. And this focuses on a character by the name of Valley who is an undocumented immigrant and they have fake ships and they have been able to live in Vermont and eventually her mom's chip actually goes haywire because it's fake and I believe that the deportation force is actually made aware that there's something going on with her chip and that they actually may be undocumented so then they try to escape to uh California I was about to say Florida but it's actually California which is considered a sanctuary city and is actually being walled off from the rest of the country because it is a sanctuary city city I think that this is going to be very interesting considering the times the conversations that are currently happening about immigration and undocumented immigrants and sanctuary cities I think this is going to be a book of its time I haven't really heard anybody really talk about this I think that Bethany has read this book but I really haven't seen anybody else read it so I'm excited to pick it up and clearly y'all I just keep saying I'm excited to pick it up I, I'm gonna stop doing that because clearly I'm excited to read all these or I wouldn't have checked them out the next one I have is I'll be the one by Leela Lee and this is about a young girl by the name of Sky who has dreams to become a k-pop star and she enters this televised competition to become a k-pop star but she is plus size and she realizes that there is a huge problem with fat phobia in the industry this is one that I'm just intrigued by because I think that no matter what industry that you into enter into especially when it's like entertainment specific there is a huge issue with body image and fat phobia and fat shaming and I'm very happy first that this um, cover actually features a model that is plus size. It is very frustrating as a plus size woman to read books about plus size characters and the covers do not fit the fact that we're talking about a plus size main character. So I am happy about that. I think that I've seen Chelsea read this book and I think Chelsea really enjoyed it and she said that it was really really great so I'm excited <laughs> said I wasn't going to say this but I'm looking forward to reading this one because I have not read a lot of books with plus size characters with the discussion around fat phobia being done very very well and I heard that this one was done very very well so I'm looking forward. The next one I have is actually a YA nonfiction book and it's One Earth People of Color Protecting Our Planet. So this basically is just a profile of BIPOC individuals, Black, Indigenous, and people of color who actually work to protect the environment. I believe it's divided up into different sections based on what aspect of the environment they're protecting. So one is like defending lands and waters, cleaning up the mess, respecting wisdom, saving animals, and showing a better way. And then for each one of the these profiles it tells you about the person and what they've done within that category and then it also says or has aspects of it where it tells you what you can do to kind of help protect and that's really really exciting. It actually also talks a little bit about their ethnic or racial backgrounds which I found very very interesting and this is people from all over the world so you get a perspective and an insight to how so many people specifically BIPOC individuals are helping to protect the environment in their homes or places where they may be living. This is one that I, I can't even remember why I picked this one up or why I had put it on hold but I want to start learning a little bit more about environmentalism. I know the surface level stuff but I think this will give me a better perspective. The next one that I have is Lobizona by Romina Garber and this is a, about a young girl by the name of Manuela Azul who is on the run from her father's Argentinian crime family I believe. 
yeah, Argentinian crime family. And what ends up happening is that they escape to a small time small town in Miami, Florida, and they're doing fine until ICE discovers them. And then they end up going on the run again. And her grandmother is attacked and she wants to help. But the only clue that she has on figuring things out is the Z emblem. So then she finds out and I'm going to read it from here because I don't want to get it wrong that it is a world trait out of Argentinian folklore where the seventh consecutive daughter is born a Bruja and the seventh consecutive son is a Lobizon, which is a werewolf. So I think that this is going to have some interesting commentary also set in a fantastical world that focuses on witches and werewolves. I've heard great things about this. I love this tagline right here where it says undocumented, unprotected, unafraid. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of commentary on it and I'm very much so looking forward to it. The next one I have here is Miss Meteor and this was written by Taylor K. Mejia and Anna Marie McLemore and this is about two characters by the name of Lita and Chicky and Lita and Chicky live in this town called I think it's called Meteor New Mexico. It is Meteor New Mexico and that it was named after, after a meteor that literally crashed into this town and it says within the blurb that Lita came with it. So I wonder if there's some magical realism kind of thing that is going to go along with this. And it is about the two of them trying to change the commentary behind a pageant that takes place in their city. And Chicky and Lita actually were best friends at once, but they're ex-best friends. It doesn't really say why, so I'm guessing we'll find out within the within the text why they're no longer friends. But Lita wants to participate in the pageant. And of course, Chicky's like, well, you typically don't have a chance of participating because you're plus size, you're Latinx, and that's not what the community is about. They look for traditional white thin girls to participate. So I'm I'm happy to have this book. I think this is another one that I talked about in one of my most anticipated releases for October. The next one that I have here is We Are Not Free by Chasey Ch Tracy Chi and this is about 14 teens growing up in San Francisco that are living there have grown up there they are part of the community and then Pearl Harbor happens and it is going to detail the effects of what happens when that executive order was signed where Japanese Americans were sent to internment camps and I can't say that I am excited about this because it's not a level of excitement. It is a good leadway and point for discussion about the Japanese internment camps, which in my opinion is always glossed over when we talk about US history. It's like always one paragraph in the textbooks and we never really talk about it because you know why we don't talk about it. Let's just be honest here. And I know that one of y'all as a viewer had mentioned this one to me as well. So I did put it on hold. And I think that this is going to be a heartbreaking story, but I think it's an important story. And this month I'm also reading uh, they call this enemy which is also about Japanese internment camps which is why I think someone else mentioned it to me and I think that reading that one in this one hopefully I get to this one this month will be a good pair together. All right and the last section that we have is going to be the comics manga and graphic novels. Some of these I have already read so <laughs> I just still wanted to show you that I had them checked out. The first one that I read which you will see in my November wrap up is going to be Bitterroot Volume 1 Family Business and this is one that I read for the second time. This is about a family that is I think they live in Harlem. They do live in Harlem and it is an interesting look at a paranormal view of racism. What ends up happening is that this family combats these weird monsters but these monsters are actually humans that have allowed that have allowed racism and bigotry and prejudice to consume them and it is their job to fight them but there's also this extra component to it that I don't really want to go into because I'll talk about it a little bit in my November wrap up but this is such an important um, comic book series. The second volume just came out and I think that this is one that more people need to be reading, more people need to be talking about especially the climate of this country. The artwork 
is very very interesting very very intriguing and it's just a wonderful story and one that I will continuously reread because it's just that important. The next one is one that I'm actually currently reading and it's Sorry for My Familiar Volume 1 and this is by Teka Yaguraba and this is about a demon girl by the name of Patty who has trouble finding a familiar which I think everyone's familiars are supposed to be like animals but she couldn't find one so she has a human familiar and it's it's very cute it's been funny so far they're on this journey where they're supposed to be helping Patty find her dad who just kind of disappeared because of loan sharks and her human familiar is happy to be her human familiar because he is a scientist so he is doing like studies on all the creatures that he comes across I just think they have a very very cute dynamic and I'm enjoying it so far. I actually checked out the second volume, but it's at hold. It's on hold at the library, so I don't have it in this haul, but this is a manga series that I found out about through Shay, and I'm enjoying it. The next two that I have are part of one series, and that is Kakarillo Bed and Breakfast for Spirits by Wako Yaka. And this is volume one and this is volume two. I have read volume one which I talked about in my October wrap up and I just checked out volume two which I have not started yet but it's about a young girl who ends up going to this demon world for lack of a better term and she is stuck there because of some decisions that her grandfather made and it's about her trying to make her way within this world and live and survive and she's a really really great cook and I think that what it's building up to is that there's this restaurant that exists there but like everybody hates it because the menu doesn't change and I think what's going to end up happening is she's going to end up getting her own restaurant and changing things up in the world and stuff because she was supposed to be forced to marry this guy and she's like I'm not going to marry you like so he's like oh, okay if you're not going to marry me then guess what you have to figure out how you're going to live here so I think this is this has been great so far and really really quick reads. The next one that I have is one that I'm almost finished with like literally probably 20 pages of this left and this is Displacement a travel log by Lucy Knisley. Knisley? I'm, I'm probably saying her last name wrong. I actually did not mean to check this one out. I was looking for another graphic novel by the name of Displacement and this one is the one that actually came in so I put the wrong one on hold but I started to read it anyway because I was like okay well I have it now I'm just going to check it out and read it and it's actually been a really really interesting read because it's about a woman who takes her grandparents on a cruise and they are in their 90s both of them are in their 90s and they are incapable of taking care of themselves so it is from her perspective of learning what it means and what it entails to be a caretaker to someone and how stressful but also how rewarding that could be and her experience in watching her grandparents for lack of a better terms deteriorate and coming to groups with the fact that they are older and they're not the same people that they used to be it's very interesting most of it is done in watercolor in pen so there's not a lot of coloring and stuff that's going on on page but I do like seeing her just do this kind of thing of self-reflection and also just talk about her experience and what that cruise was like I think she has a couple of more of travel logs like this but I I was surprised because I really didn't need to check this one out. Next I have Persepolis by Marjan Satrapi. This is the complete bind up. This is one that I've read like three or four times already. So I'm rereading it for nonfiction November. It is about her experience growing up in Iran during the Iranian Revolution and also her time in which she immigrated from Iran to Europe. I can't remember exactly where she went but this is a great look at Iran and she is very adamant about talking about the cultural aspects of Iran and what Iran is like because Iran has this reputation from the rest of the world and people just don't really know anything about Iran and how the invasion of the British of the US of other foreign powers really played a role in the way that Iran has developed into a country. So if you haven't read Persepolis definitely read it. And the last one that I have here is The Best We Could Do which is a non-fiction graphic memoir about a family that moves from a war-torn Vietnam to America and just talking about the universal struggle with parenthood and immigration and being an immigrant. I think that this one is really cool because it's just done in this consistent muted color which I really really like and I'm just a huge fan of graphic memoirs anyway. So this is 
is one that I hopefully will pick up before the end of the month. All right, y'all. So that's it. That is my November library book haul. I'm going to make sure that I still do one of these every single month because I do rotate my stuff in and out constantly. I mean, I work in the library, so <laughs> I'm around library books all the time. So I will make sure that I rotate all my stuff in and out. If you are interested in any of these books, let me know. Let me know how you use your library. Are you using your library more? Just, you know, I'm a huge advocate for libraries. So I hope everybody is using them. As always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content from me, click the subscribe button, hit the bell for notification. If you're looking for ways to support my channel, the links will be down in the description box, as well as ways to follow me on social media. And I'll be back with another video soon.